Today's a big day because we are pulling out the Monza cluster and replacing it with a Corsa cluster. Let's get started. All right, so here's a cluster we got from our friend Michael Tremier down in Beaufort, South Carolina, who we met down in Springfest at Helen, Georgia. Thank you again, Michael, for this. It is such a generous gift for our project Flooded Corvair. I think what I'm going to do first is just disassemble this thing and see what works. And I know this might upset some purists, but I'm really more of a fan of the silver on the dashboard rather than the black that the courses came with from the factory. So I think I'm going to strip the paint off, polish the bezels, and paint it silver to match the current dashboard. Now I know it's not right or original, and I'm sure to hear some comments about it, but I think I like it better. So let's get this thing disassembled and see what we're actually working with. Got the entire dash assembly apart and everything came apart pretty well. Um, looks like more than anything, it just needs a good cleaning. I mean, the, the lenses are pretty dusty and there's there's paint flaking off of the inside of the, of the, the housings there, but not a big deal. We'll clean these up, um, take this apart and get it repainted. This is the part that I really want to spend the most time on because this is what you see. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like there may be a little oxidizing or pitting through here. Um, let me get some, some like paint stripper on here and see if we can take it down to bare metal. Might have to do a little sanding and touching up on this, but um, let's get it clean and see what it looks like first. So this is one of the, uh, I think they call them an electromechanical clocks on the uh, the Corsa. Um, I saw one of these in the um, the Thunderbird, in the Dad 66 Thunderbird, and it, it didn't work anymore. I mean, I could get it to, to run for a few minutes, but these things are notorious about not working right, and most people just replace them with a quartz version. I'll see if I can get it cleaned up and working. It would be cool if it did. Um, basically, the way that they work is you've got power and ground here, and you've got a regular um, watch or clock mechanism where you've got your balance wheel right here, and the winding mechanism is this thing. So this... As it's running, these two points get closer and closer together, and then when they touch, it pushes this back, winding the watch. And this one's not engaging for some reason, so I'll have to look at it and see if it's dirty. Um, yeah, right there. Anyway, 
that's the way that these guys work. There it goes. So let me clean up the rest of these and then I'll, uh, I'll play with this guy a little bit more at the end. All right, got the little clear lens cover snapped back into place. This for the, uh, which one is this? This is the temp press. Just slides onto two little tabs down in there. Like so. And this sits right on top. And finally, the gauge will just drop back in. Make sure you don't lose those two little red washers here. With that in place, we'll flip it over, put the two red insulators back on our washer, and then tighten these down. With the gauge all reassembled, we'll take the, uh, the little trim plate, which I also cleaned up and painted, and line this up. And you can see there's a tab that goes, that lines up with this tab on the bottom here. So that will just sit right over there. And then we have our cleaned up plastic. It also lines up. And now we've got a refurbished tachometer. It's only about, you know, five more gauges to go, and then we can start putting this thing back together. Now, looking at the clock, I am probably 99% sure that this isn't gonna work, but I will try it out. So we're gonna ground here, apply power to the little stud here, and get a screwdriver. Here is the point system, and it's a little dirty right now, but I'm just gonna see if the coil here even works. And it does. You can see as soon as I'm releasing tension here, this is contacting the, the other side of the points here and it's snapping it backwards. Because what's supposed to happen is as this winds down, it'll come close here, reach contact with this um, part of the point and then fire it back. And that firing it back actually winds the watch. Now, the real question is, does the watch work? Okay, so the balance wheel is free. I'm betting that it is just old and gummed up. Yeah, he, it, you can see it runs for a little bit. And then stops. Let me try winding it. And see if that will give it enough tension to run. No, I think this guy's just done for. I can try some of the other clocks that came with the uh, the parts that Michael gave us. Um, I'm betting they're probably all the same. Whereas, you know, you've got 60 years worth of of lubricant that has just become gummed up, or you know, something is has broken on the balance shaft, and there's just not anybody that could could make this a worthwhile restoration. I mean, there, there might be somebody who restores these things, there probably is, but um, for the cost, it would probably be easier to just 
put like a quartz replacement in it or just leave it as it is and just look at it. All right, let's keep putting this thing back together. Almost there. Okay, so I've got my wiring harness all made up here. Um, so this is like the engine compartment end, and we've got, uh, you know, for our vacuum hose, this is gonna go to our temp sending unit. Um, and then on this end, we've got the other end of the vacuum hose. We've got a, uh, this, I think this one's gonna go to the tachometer. This one is for the cooling temp sensor, the cylinder head temperature. And then I, I put an extra one in there just for you know, if I needed something in the future. Plus we've got some other provisions for a, uh, a future project on the Corvair, but you're gonna have to wait a couple of videos to see that one because that one's gonna be really cool. While we're doing, I figured this was a good enough time as any to change the uh, clutch cable out on this car since it was the original one um, from 1965 and uh, was a little rusty. So pick this one up from Clark's, just gonna toss it in since it runs basically parallel with the wiring harness. Seems like as good a time as any. All right, let's go ahead and get this wiring harness in and get the cluster installed. You know, Chevrolet, for not having a transmission tunnel, there really isn't a whole lot of room down here to run extra wires. Coming around to the back of the car, um, thankfully Chevy was kind enough to include a little rubber grommet right here. So we'll just pop this out, enlarge this hole to fit this uh, this new loom, and then just run it parallel with this harness, which will go all the way back to the engine compartment. Then all we've got to do is run the front half of the harness up there, up into the the interior, and hook it up to the gauges. Okay, so coming back around to the plug here, um, we've got our two wires. So this is gonna be our cylinder head temperature and this is our tachometer. Now looking at the plug that goes into the instrument cluster itself, this port right here is gonna be our cylinder head temperature. And then let me move my 
hand here. Okay, so this one right here is going to be the cylinder head temperature, and then the next one over is tachometer. So I picked up these pins. They were left over, I think, from the project um, where I put full voltage to the coil when we did the ignition upgrade. So this one is just going to slide right in, and if you look, the, the pin has to go to the bottom. So this one will slide right in, in theory, to that one. And then this one will slide right in next to it. Okay, so now we've got all the wiring done. Um, and then this is just going to go to our, uh, our vacuum slash boost gauge with our extra wire right here. And I'll just tape that off so, you know, it doesn't uh, cause a problem. Then we can go ahead and put the cluster back in. Okay, the last thing that we have to do in order to make the uh, the Corsa cluster work is just to put a power wire right here to this pin, and this is the one that's going to power up the clock. So we've got, again, we've got our cylinder head temperature, our tachometer, and then at the other end of the same plug, we're just going to run a constant 12-volt power wire. Um, this is just going to run straight to the fuse box to uh, let our clock work. I love these little clamps here. They are, you can't really move them easy, but boy, they hold tight. All right, let's throw this thing back in. All right, already I love this so much more. Having the tachometer built in here rather than just like shoved up under the dash. Um, and then the addition of a clock and the, uh, you know, boost gauge um, and cylinder head temperature. This is going to be so cool to have this. So let me go ahead and finish throwing this thing in. Then we can wire up the back end and uh, take this thing for a spin. All right, we've got it all back together, got it wired, and let's see if we can fire this thing up and make sure all the gauges work. Um, of note, I did find another clock in the, uh, the bin of parts that Michael gave me. Just did a little light cleaning on it, and look at it go. All right, um, I don't have the cylinder head temperature hooked up because apparently that's a very specific um, thermistor that's used that's not like a standard thing. So um, used ones are pretty expensive and you know the, the availability of aftermarket ones isn't great either. Um, I know Clark sells one, but uh, it looks like they're out of stock on them. So we'll just have to, to keep looking for one of those or if uh, somebody out there has one that they want to, uh, to let go of, just uh, shoot me an email below. I'll make sure my email is in the, uh, the video description and um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll pick it up from you. All right, let's go see how this thing works. The tack isn't working. Oh, there it goes. Okay, fuel gauge is working. Looks like the vacuum is working. Um, although. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, that that gauge is really working all that well because it was sitting below zero when I started. So I've heard those aren't terribly accurate to begin with, but I don't know, we'll see. All right, let's go take this thing for a drive and see how, the, uh, how it all works. Okay, first test drive with a new Corsa cluster. Um, so, so far it looks like all of the gauges are working um, with the exception of the cylinder head temp, which you know we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, First impressions is that the tachometer has got a pretty wild swing on it because it's got like, I don't know, 270 degree sweep for 6,000 RPM. So the, the needle moves a lot even though it doesn't really look like we're turning a ton of RPM. Um, speedometer works, needle's not bouncing, um, so that's good. Um, the clock looks like it's working and it's actually keeping time, so really excited about that. Um, the manifold vacuum gauge is, you know, for all intents and purposes, unusable. Um, if I had thought about it, I could have tested it beforehand before installing the cluster to try and calibrate it, but from what I understand, they're not really all that terribly accurate to begin with anyway, so there's not really any, you know, engine or tuning decisions that I would make 
based on the results of what that's showing. So it's more of just a gee whiz for right now. Um, if I do find another gauge at some point, I'll probably replace it, but that's not terribly high on my list of priorities. Um, gas gauge looks like it's working. So overall, this was a huge upgrade for the flooded Corvair. I love the overall appearance of the Corsa Dash, and as an ICU person, I love having you know more information rather than less. That's always a bonus. The Monza Dash has a certain degree of simplicity, which I can appreciate, but I would rather have all of the gauges than just a couple. I also really like having the silver coves on it versus the uh, the black. Again, I know it's not original. Um, it may upset or offend some purists, but I like the silver better. So I, I'm glad that we, we decided to, to go with silver rather than painting the other side black to match, um, because I'm not trying to pretend that this is a Corsa. This is just my interpretation of a Monza. Now to answer a question that a lot of people have asked lately, which is why haven't I put out more Corvair videos recently? The number one answer is because I've just been enjoying driving the car. Summertime is when car shows are out. Um, I've been enjoying just hopping in the car and blasting down a, a backcountry road um, on a day off. Um, it makes me smile. So unfortunately, the next couple of videos that are gonna come out are actually gonna take the Corvair out of commission for a little while. I mentioned at Springfest that the frunk has some, some rust in the floor, and just like when you make a clean spot on anything, um, it just kind of highlights how dirty the rust is. Starting to look around at how much rust uh, repair needs to happen, I think there's a little bit more than just the, the trunk floor. So what that means is that I've got to do a good bit of cutting, repairing, and I'm also going to take out the entire front suspension in order to do it. Plus, that gives me an opportunity to go through and rebuild this front suspension. Um, with the exception of a couple of bushings, it is completely original, down to the shocks. So that really needs to be gone through. Between those two things, that's going to put the car down for you know probably a month or so. But it's what comes after that that I am so excited about. Um, for the last few months, I have been doing some preparation and designing and researching on an exciting new project for the car. And I will just put a tiny little teaser up here so that you can see what we've been working on. But for now, that's gonna wrap up this video. I could not do any of this without all of the love and support that you guys have shown me. Thank you again, Michael, for the, the Corsa Cluster. That was such a cool donation to the project. Um, again, thank you very much. If you love seeing Corvairs and other things get brought back to life, consider hitting that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Again, it's a free way to help support us and lets me know that you like seeing these kind of videos. Thank you all for watching. Take care of yourselves. God bless, and we'll see you next time.